Hello and welcome to a short discussion on some hidden features and functionality around spare parts. My name is Chris Winston from Project Tech and I will be your host. When we get into Maximo, we will be seeing Maximo Application Suite 8.6 and Manage 8.2. This and a great deal more content may be found in the Maximo Online Resources and Education or MORE community. A great deal of content is available even without membership, but if you do join, the latest edition will be several Maximo 7.6 basic training classes that have been made available, including video and printable documentation for free. Spare parts represents the intersection of assets and items. And there's a little automation we'll take a look at as well, the add as a spare part button, uh, the functionality behind that in item master, and where that shows up throughout the application. Spare parts show up in many places, but access to them is often tied to a button you may not notice in many of these applications and areas. So let's take a look at Maximo. So here we are in manage and let's start in the item master, which I've been to before. There it is. And let's go look at an item. Let's see. One, one, four, five. Nope, not four, three. That looks right. Mechanical seal, an old favorite. And there's the add as a spare part button. So you won't use this everywhere. Uh, supplies, of course not, but for things like seals, belts, bearings, things like that, you'll probably want to go ahead and depending on your industry, how you're using Maximo, you may want to use these, this add as a spare part functionality and we'll take a look at how it's going to work. We'll also take a look at where some of the data will actually show up. So on the inventory side, if we look at inventory for the same part, we'll see the where use tab. And the where use tab is just displaying data from the spare part table or object. And this is indicating the assets that this particular um, part is on. If we, on the other hand, go take a look at assets and looks like 11450 was there. So let's go ahead Take a look at it. And the spare parts tab. Still looking at the spare part table or object, but in this case, just a different view from the asset looking at the spare parts that are associated. It's not a big object, but it's a pretty powerful one. Uh, and it'll give you the options as well later on to, to do things with it. Uh, but let's go ahead and we're going to look at a different asset. So we're going to use 11440. And let's see, it has no spare parts associated. So we could go ahead and add them here, but let's take a look at the automation first. So let's go ahead and jump into quick reporting. Yeah, that'll be easier. So we'll go ahead, create a work order, and we're just going to replace the mechanical seal on that pump. Um, one, one, four, four, zero. Uh, it's in quick reporting, so it's already an in progress status and we can go ahead and start charging stuff to it. So among other things, your materials, uh, we can just add new, but let's go ahead and leverage some things here. Uh, let's see, assets, spare parts. Now we looked at 11440 and we saw, you know, by default, it pulls it up. It's got no spare parts. However, 11450 does. And sure enough, it's got that mechanical seal. Select it, hit OK, save the work order. Ah, of course, got to give it a storeroom. 
and I should probably pick a bin. Let's see, is that going to be a good one? Yep, sure is. Now I'll save it. And it's there. Now, I've only issued the part. Haven't changed the status in the work order, just issued the part. I'm going to go on over from the work order over to assets. Take a look at the spare parts. There it is. So that transaction of issuing the part with the add as a spare part on the item master added this particular part to the asset spare parts list correspondingly and where used for this particular item. In inventory, you'll see 11440 as a new asset that's been added. But while I'm here, I happen to notice, you know, there's this other asset that has the rest of the spare parts I need. So when I go select it, select spare parts, I get too many. Uh, but I know 11450 is where I want to go. So we'll hit refine. And if you notice, you got fleet. And you'll have all sites in here, depending on your level of access. I have administrator access, so I get everything. Uh, I can specify a site. But as long as this number doesn't repeat in multiple sites, it should just show up as, yep, Bedford. And then, I know I already have this one. I can get the rest. And they are now added as spare parts. And then when I go back over to work order, down here again, if I go to action, select asset spare parts, there's the full list. No batch job needs to run in the middle of the night. It's real time. All right, so that's just some of the things you'll see on the asset, the inventory, and work order areas. But what about other areas in the application? So let's take a look at job plans. And let's see, I think I've got a job plan out here. JP1140. Got the number right. All right. So over on work assets, let's see, shouldn't have anything. Yeah, there's nothing here. Back over to job plans. And here we are. So the familiar job plan. Uh, there should actually be a task. Our materials tab should be a task reference. Yep, task 40 needs the mechanical seal. So uh, let's go ahead and select spare parts. And we'll use 11440. And we were fine. And I, if you hit OK, you know you're just going to go right back to the previous screen. So you want to make sure you come up and hit refine, which says let's filter this list before I then select the part. I hit OK. And this one's for task 40, which is to replace the mechanical seal. And save it. Uh, I guess we should save what store and we'll get it out of. And didn't like that. All right. Let's see. Oh, probably because there's more than one. There it is. So we want Bedford's central store. Save it. And we're done. So that's where spare parts can help you in the job plans application, even without a work asset being specified. It doesn't have to be there. You have access to be able to put the asset number in directly in the spare parts uh, sub window dialog. And let's see purchase acquisitions. So over in requisitions, and we'll grab, yeah, that one should do. Um, mainly because it's waiting approval. And for PR lines, now we also have the ability to pull spare parts. Again, we have access to a lot. You now we can filter just by site. And remember, refine, not okay yet. Uh, that takes us to a smaller number when we can, of course, get even smaller. We specify the asset. And there's our mechanical seal. We can grab it. Uh, and we'll need to finish out 
a few other things. Let's see. We need it's an each conversions one. Um, actually, at this point for the requisition, I should do it, and it does. Uh, similarly, in purchase orders or, or request for quotations, why not RFQ? Uh, let's see. I need somebody in progress. There we go. RFQ lines, select spare parts. Again, same thing. We've got access to everything. We can specify and refine and pick an item. So you'll see that you have access to um, the spare parts in a lot of different places throughout uh, the application. And that's really going to be a big help in terms of using and leveraging that functionality. So feel free, uh, again, to browse around the more community and look at other content. Yeah, suggestions for videos or areas of concern or just a plain old question, just, you know, as members, you can create questions, uh, you know, things that you're having a problem with and you want to get a response on. So feel free to put those in. And thanks very much for your time. Have a good day.